Well, this has just got interesting. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. I've just finished a film about needle bodkins and fabric armour, but I've had another thought and I'm going to go back and have a look at needle bodkins, fabric armour and what happens if you wax them. Maybe nothing. Uh, before we do that though, just so you know, I've got some excellent websites full of medieval weaponry, so if you're interested in that stuff, go and check out the links. What am I talking about when I'm talking about wax on arrowheads? The short answer is I don't really know. The long answer is more involved. Last year, I did a film with a bunch of friends called Mythbusting, Arrows vs Armour, and it was looking at shooting an Agincourt era arrow and an Agincourt era breastplate and what happened. Now, a spoiler alert, I've got two heads here. The crossbow head on your right hand side, shorter, blunter. Very, very typical of a crossbow head. Don't tell me it's wrong, go look in the museums. The one on the left is a longbow arrow, short bodkin, slightly pointier usually, and that one's based on a Museum of London from 1410, I think it was. Obviously the tip is deformed where it struck some steel, but you get an idea that there's quite a difference in the shape of the head. You know, there's a million of you out there and collectively we can really learn some things. And one of the comments that kept coming up was put wax on the end of your arrowhead. Now, I don't know quite what that means, but it was talking about a blob of wax on the end of your bolt head. So there you go, I've just fitted a little blob of beeswax on the end. Does that do anything? Well, today we're not going to find out because I'm not shooting plate cutters with a blob of wax on it. The last film I've just done was on fabric, uh, flexible armour, so male, but also fabric armour and needle bodkins. Now, my understanding before I did that film was that needle bodkins were excellent at going through fabric armour. I did not find that the case. It was not the most powerful of bows. It was a 350 pound crossbow, this one here. Uh, so equivalent weight to maybe a 70 or 80 pound longbow. But nonetheless, it gives a difference between different bolt types. And I mean, here's the hole here. And this one went through, as you can see, maybe 25 millimeters, an inch. It went through the gambeson and into the foam beyond. So not, most likely not a killing depth. But it got me wondering because this needle bodkin jammed up in the gambeson very quickly. And that's what stopped it going deep. And I wonder what happens if you dip a bit of wax on this and if there was a difference between this one uh, with the wax and without the wax. Because as it goes in, the wax will melt because the amount of energy that's being expended in deforming that gambeson to get through is heat. The energy turns into heat, heat melts the wax, wax lubricates the entry, maybe it goes deeper. Maybe not, let's find out. So we're gonna shoot three dry and then the, exactly the same three again. And now I'm gonna mark them and measure them exactly the same three again with a little bit of wax on and see what happens. I have my three needle bodkins here, my gambeson and a section of house insulation foam. Now the reason I'm shooting against the insulation foam is that I want each shot to be comparable with the last and if I put it straight onto the straw boss there are hard bits, soft bits and so on. So I'm going to nail this whole setup onto the boss and then we're going to go and shoot at that. So these bolts weigh in at about 58, 60 grams each. Lovely needle bodkins heads made by Will Sherman at Medieval Arrows. And let's go. So a 350 pound draw weight bow. And let's go again. So you get an idea of the kind of speed that you can load these things at with a goat's foot lever. So it's not bad, it's about a shot every 10 seconds. You can see that they're not going in super deep into the gambeson, they're getting a bit wobbly. In fact, we've lost one. So you can see how resistant that gambeson is, in fact, to these needle bodkins that it was quite wobbly. So the third one, one of them fell out. I've marked those two. I'm just going to do a third one again and then we'll go back and mark that. <coughs> well, that one bounced straight off. So in fact, let's use that as the beginning of our test. We'll see if the wax ones do any better. 
These are our three bolts that we just shot. This was the one that actually skipped out, fell out at the end, but I've put it back in until you can feel from the resistance it was the right depth, and I've marked it. I've marked these ones as well, and what I'm gonna do is pull them out, measure that distance from the mark to the tip, and just write it on the butt of the bolt so we've got a record of it. I'm gonna wax it and do it all over again. I've taken the same three bolts, exactly the same bolts, and I've put a slight, doubt you can even see it, wax coating on them, very thin skim of beeswax. Shoot them again, let's see what happens. Let's go have a look. So we're back at the, uh, at the target again, and I can tell you this is about to get very interesting. So I'm gonna remark these, and that is the new position. I don't even know if we're gonna know the old position. They all have got the measurement of the depth written on it, and the other ones are just on the other face. But let's pull out and see what we got. Oh, it really is tough, this camps, blimey. That is the new mark, that is the old marks. Next one. So the old one was 26, and the new one is, again, 40, 45, 45. I did wonder if there was gonna be something, and I was hoping there was gonna be something, but you're never quite sure. That's experimental archeology span for you. This one was 18, this went in less before, maybe it's a thicker head and it doesn't have the old mark on it, but it was 18 before, and again, amazingly consistent, 45 millimeters again. So 45 millimeters into Imperial, inch and three quarter. Well, this has just got interesting. Well, I might be a geek, but goodness, I found that interesting. So, three needle bodkins, and I wrote the numbers on the back. First number is depth of penetration dry, Second one, depth of penetration waxed. 26 millimetres, 45. 25 millimetres, 47. 18 millimetres, 45. So off the top of my head there, what we're talking about is an increase in penetration of 40, 45%. That is fantastic. Now, medieval people are not stupid, you know, from 800 years ago. Same brains we've got, different technology, but the same ability to observe and to adapt and to change what they do. Now, I can't tell you that they put wax on their, on their bolt tips and arrow tips, but there is a persistent thinking that they might have done. Was it on needle bodkins? Don't know. Did it work? Hell yes, it works. You know, that was brilliant. Now, we today, we put Teflon on, on bullets for getting through fabric armour, so, you know, they're facing the same challenges back then. Why wouldn't they have done it? Did they? No, yeah, we don't know. Maybe. Does it work? Yes, it works. So, another fantastically interesting experimental archaeologist test, or at least interesting for me anyway. Um, and if you're interested in medieval weaponry, go check my sites out. There's lots to have a look at. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>